Detective, I want to back up just a little bit. Uh, are you perfect? No. I'll preface that. Um, what would the... Oh, I'm sorry. Just need that. Sorry, I can't read it. Okay. What were the conditions, as you recall, uh, in the warehouse when you were doing the collection? Um, it was... Um, well, Temperature-wise. I mean, we don't have to go over the, the dirt thing. Do you remember how, it, what the environment was? Yeah, it was extremely hot and uh, humid up there. What's a Tyvek suit? It is um, a suit that is designed to prevent um, transfer uh, of evidence from either the scene to me or me to the scene. Did you wear a Tyvek suit the entire time you were processing? Yes. Was there a moment or was there time when you were processing the scene that you, uh, that your arms may have been exposed or you, know, you may have come into contact with a piece of evidence? Sure. Okay, would you tell the jury about um, You know, there's a lot, lot going on, especially a lot of moving parts. And um, we try to control everything the best we can, but um, I'll be, I don't know how else to put it. I'm a real sweaty dude. So when it's hot and it's humid, I'm, I'm a pool water. So uh, I, I sweat a lot. And up there, um, it, was, it was one of the hotter scenes I've ever worked. So, you know, you're in these Tyvek, they don't let you breathe because it's a barrier suit to prevent things from escaping or coming into the suit. So um, they get they get very hot, and um, moisture builds up very quick, and so it, it can be pretty miserable. But um, you know, everybody sweats, and and uh, especially scenes like this, it's very hard to control everything. Uh, did you become aware that uh, during the analysis of some of the pieces of evidence, or the piece of evidence in this case, that uh, your DNA was found on it? I did. Okay. Do you remember what piece of evidence that was? I think it was one of the bags that was over the victim's head. Piece of that bag? Yes. Okay. Did you collect and process evidence uh, in this uh, process evidence in this case? I don't, I don't think you collected physically other than maybe the bleach and a few other items we're going to talk about in a minute. But did you process uh, the here I'm going to show you the Marcus's Commons exhibit Commons exhibit 240 just outside the office door, uh, around the corner from where the body was, but it was just outside the door, just on the left side as you're walking out. Okay, and then we're looking again at Thomas Exhibit 12. Can you show where you remember where it was found? Right. Right over here about that door? Yes. Okay. And there were several items found there, is that correct? There was. All right, so I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 241. Now, where is the, you took these photos? I did. They fairly and accurate, accurately depict what they're... What's in them? Yes. Um, is this, where, where are these photos being taken? Where are they being taken? It's at the Penn Sheriff's Department in the, uh, in the lab. Okay. So, and what are we looking at here? This is the inside of the day planner. Since you open it up, this is what you see. Okay, and that's Commons Exhibit 241 for the record. I'm going to show you now Commons Exhibit 242. What are we looking at here? This is, a, a, <coughs> excuse me, an Applebee's bag that um, uh, was also next to that day planner with different items in it as well. Okay, now when you log this in, did you log it in as an Applebee's bag? No. What did you log it in as? It's an olive carton bag. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what's been marked as Collins Exhibit 243. Okay. And now Collins Exhibit 244. What are these? Same bag. Just now <clears throat> starting to show the contents of what was in the bag. Okay. Now I'm going to show you Collins Exhibit 245. Shoes in the back there. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're also. I mean, this is as we're pulling things out, we're photographing. So as we pull it out, we photograph and see what's underneath. Okay, Collins Exhibit 246. Mm -hmm. Same thing. More contents of the bag. Okay. 
Phillips 247. And uh, what was in the bottom of the bag? Yeah, what was in the bottom of the bag? Uh, it was a styrofoam container. It looked like Hannah, um, some of her dinner, whatever that might have been left over, an appetizer. Okay, and I believe we've discussed this, these items previously. So yes. uh, what are we looking at here? You can just generally describe it. I think the jury is familiar at this point. Uh, the victim was found without shoes on, but we found these shoes in her uh, Applebee's bag. So uh, we just we took a photo of those, of the shoes as well as the keys that were in the bag. Okay, 249. Those were several time cards that, that were also in the bag. 250. And the same thing. Okay. Uh, is this, are, what's the difference between these two photos? You've got, it, it's five cards. Is this ten cards, or what are we looking at? They're both part numbers. Yes, it is. It's ten cards, or is it, or is it, or is it the same five cards? Front and back. It's the same. It, it is front and back. Okay. Now, let me show you another. Oh, 251, what are we looking at here? Oh, this, the cards had um, some red, reddish color staining on them that appear to possibly be blood. So uh, we're using a phenolphthalein test kit, which is a presumptive test for the presence of blood. And this is what it looks like on a Q-tip when the test positive, you immediately get a reaction like this. It's a bright pink in color. Okay, and that's just depicting that reaction. Yes. Is that capturing that? All right, Columns Exhibit 252. Um, this would be her purse. Columns Exhibit 253. Same thing that was found with the other items here. Okay, now I'm going to show you these 254. What are we looking at 254? <clears throat> this is the contents, some of the contents. What about 255 more? Yes, these are receipts and, and cards that were found in her purse. 256. And the same thing. 257. Um, same thing for the back side of the well, card. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just, just a little slower. Know when you're ready. <coughs> 256 was cards. And 257 is, I believe, the same cards, just flipped over. <coughs> 258. That would be her wallet. Okay. Other contents within the wall with that image? Uh, her driver's license, and there's some other cards that um, will be, in, I would imagine, in the next one there. Okay, and where are all these in, in the wall? Uh, all the was contained in the wall. Please have a seat. Now, in the office area, did you collect any evidence other than the bleach? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <coughs> what did you collect? There were some uh, tool mark impressions that were lifted from the pry area around the door frame, and then there were some um, scrapings that I took from the actual door that was damaged from being pried. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Collins Exhibit 65. Um, this is a close-up of a door jam. Um, it's a, like an aluminum frame, and you can see that there's one second. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm going to turn this sideways so okay. I can get it all. Jeff, what exhibit is that? 65. 55? 65. 65. Okay. So you, you see that there's certain areas here that have, someone has tried to pry into the, the door there with okay. some type of tool. Now, you, in your, you, had, you talked about having training and doing this type of collection, um, and I believe the jury has the jury's already seen the casting. Okay. Um, now, were you the person that, that actually did that? I was. Um, and who, did 
did you actually collect that, or did you give it to someone else to, to take it? Do you remember? I made I made the um, I made the casting, and then I think actually detective I think it was detective Brunson maybe that that um, actually walked in. Okay. He was there with me when I was. Okay. How long does it take for something like that to dry? with you? Um, depends on. Uh, usually it takes about. Really, they get dry for only about twenty minutes. Everything that we've talked about, um, <coughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, did that all take place on on or about 529? Uh, yes, it was. In the processing that all happened then? Yes. Okay. Um, did you have any, what did you do um, uh, the next day? Do you recall 530? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was the next day, but it was hours later. Okay. It was real early morning hours of... Um, uh, the next morning when we executed a search warrant. Or no, I'm sorry. It's when we went to the, um, the autopsy. Okay. So you did attend the autopsy? I did. Okay. Um, and we're going to review the photos, maybe some of the photos you took or the photos that the Emmy took with mm -hmm. another witness, okay? Sure. Now, how long were you at the autopsy? Uh, a couple hours at least. Okay. And after that, what what did you do? Uh, after that, we would take whatever we uh, was turned over to us, the clothing, whatever, um, other evidence. Then we would have taken that back to the department, and we would log that in evidence. Okay. Now, did you take possession of the did you, or were you just there document? Document. After the autopsy, well, what did you do? Uh, where did you go after the autopsy? Um, we went back to Fisher Thermo uh, to continue the search. Okay. And what areas did you search there? We searched the warehouse area, and we searched um, the office areas. They have, they have offices on the top end, lower level. So we searched the uh, lower level uh, offices on that day. Okay. Uh, were you, did you take part in the search of the janitor's closet? Yes. Okay, and you documented that as well? I did. Did you collect any evidence at that point? I did not. Okay. Have a moment here, Mike. Judge, may we approach? You may. We're going to play a video deposition of a of testimony. So the testimony of the next witness will be presented to you in the form of a written, or it's a videotape deposition. You shall give the witness the same credence and credibility that you would give her if she were here to testify in person. You shall draw no inference about the testimony of the witness simply from the fact that the witness is not here to testify in person. Testimony approach. Amen. We're, um, just kind of, she is out of um, order. She's a serologist, but they need a little time to go through some exhibits. So rather than if you another break, we're going to play this today. And we'll say, try to be good straight some time as well. Both mm -hmm. parts agree to that. So this will be personally out of, out of sync from what you've been hearing. I guess it's best way to put that. Judge, I don't, I don't believe the jury heard what you, I think they're in trouble hearing. So. Did, did you hear me? No. Okay. No. She's a serologist, so she is, it's out of order from what you've been hearing. Uh, we're doing that in the interest of uh, being good stewards of your time. The parties have agreed to that, so 
um, they need some time to go through some more exhibits for this witness. So rather than take another break, we're going to play this while they're doing so. Yeah, the TV up there so they can see it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Austin, I'm going to have them slide the TV up to there, so if you want to go over and watch it, you can. Mm -hmm. Let's go get separation of witness issues that I'm discussing. Anyone else can testify? Commonwealth or defense, do you have any witnesses in the courtroom? No. May we approach? Yeah. Okay. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth? The truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Justin, pick me up from here. Uh, it, why don't we do the podium just to make sure, unless you, there's something at your desk that you need there. Sometimes. <laughs> I, I don't think for this one. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, introduce yourself to the jury, please. I'm Michelle Burns. And ma'am, where are you employed? I work uh, for the Forensic Laboratory System, uh, currently at the Jefferson Lab. And what are your responsibilities there? I'm a forensic biologist, but my title is a forensic scientist specialist, too. So I examine evidence that comes into the lab for the presence of body fluids. Okay, how long have you been doing that? You can do that. You have to have an education uh, of some sort. Do that. Yes. Tell the jury what your background is, your, your educational background. I graduated from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville with a bachelor's degree in biochemistry, uh, cellular and molecular biology. Okay, and then... Um, where did you go from there? Uh, once I was lucky, actually, the day after I walked across the stage to find this job. Um, and once I was hired, I went through a in-house training at the Central Forensic Laboratory in Frankfort, Kentucky. And then they released me to do casework. And you've had the job ever since? Yes. Okay, so you are a serologist. Yes. Uh, a forensic serologist. Uh, usually a forensic biologist, but yes. Okay. Uh, what does a serologist do? Uh, a forensic serologist, is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. Um, I examine body fluids that are submitted to the lab for a body, excuse me, for blood, semen, saliva on the evidence that's submitted, and um, I ship it off to Frankfurt in Central, excuse me, sorry, kind of frazzled, uh, in Frankfurt, Kentucky at the Central Lab where they do DNA analysis. I'm going to give you a scenario, okay? Okay. A law enforcement agency, they, they take a swab that they think is blood. They don't know. They think it is. Before it goes to the DNA lab, it would go to someone like you, and you actually say yes or no. It's blood or it's not blood. If it is blood, then you would send it off for DNA analysis if that's what the submitting agency wants. Yes. Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you don't actually do the DNA testing, right? No, I'm You're not. just a, a stop point before we get the DNA testing. Yes. Okay. Now, you work for the Kentucky State Police Lab. Is, um, is the Kentucky State Police uh, Regional Lab, is it accredited? Yes, it is. And who's accredited through? The ASCLAD Lab, which is the American Society of Crime Lab Directors Laboratory Accreditation Board. Okay, and when you say a lab is accredited, what does that mean? It basically means we have um, this outside company, the analysts at other labs. They would come in and make sure that our manuals and protocols match up with the casework that we are providing. Understood. Now, this is the case of Commonwealth versus David Dooley um, out of uh, Boone County, Kentucky. Yes. Uh, were some materials submitted to you for testing? Yes, they were. And uh, Ms. Burns, did you generally report this case? I did. Okay. How many, uh, not number of items submitted, but how many submissions were made? Like, Sometimes you may get one submission with a number of items and a second submission. How many total submissions did you get in this case? I received two different submissions. Okay. Well, let's talk about the um, let's talk about the first submission. If okay. I can refer to my notes. Uh, you, do you have them with you? Yes. And will that refresh your memory? Yes, it will. Okay. And if you would, please, I want you to discuss what the item is, what test you performed, and what the results of that test. Okay. Okay. I can refer to it as my items. Is that well, well, I want to do it too. May I, may I approach the witness? Yes. Yes. 
maybe just let uh, Ben see that so we can be referencing the same report. That's your item number, correct? Yes. And then next to that is a, that's the agency, the submitting agency's item number, correct? Yes. So, for example, the first item you have here is item nine, but that's item fifty-eight from the Boone County Sheriff's Office, correct? Yes. And the title is underwear from Michelle Mock. Is that right? That's correct. What what I'd like to do for the jury's benefit, because they may not know what your item is, when you give your item, we will you also please give the Boone County Sheriff's Office item as well. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And I think I just answered the first question for you. What was the first uh, item on the list? It was uh, some underwear from Michelle Mockby, correct? Yes. And what test did you do on that? There was red-brown staining on this item. Um, I tested it for the presence of blood. And I also tested it for semen and for saliva. And what were the results of those tests? The underwear contained blood. Presumptive testing for human origin was positive. This item contained semen, and no saliva was found on this item. Okay. And what ultimately happened to that item as a result of your test? I had also taken swabs from the waistband of this item. That along, um, that was sent to Frankfurt for DNA analysis. I took a cutting of the... Um, sample that contained semen and that was sent back to the agency. Okay. And why was it sent back to the agency? That item was sent back to the agency because I also I received a sexual assault evidence collection kit from Michelle Mockby mm -hmm. and I had more intimate swabs, vaginal swabs, and that was sent. You, you wanted to send the best item you had? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. So let's look at um, the next item on your list. What, what item number do you sign that? My item number 10, I have Boone County Sheriff's Department item number 59. And what was that? Hair from Michelle Mockby. Okay. And did you perform any tests on that? I did not. Okay. And why not? Um, that item was originally submitted as a sexual assault evidence collection kit. When I opened it, it ended up being um, a mound of hair in a box, and I do not do analysis on hair, so I repackaged that, and uh, that was eventually sent to the central lab branch for trace analysis. When you get items from a, from an agency, in this case the Boone County Sheriff's Office, do you talk to somebody about what it is yes. that they want tested? Yes. Okay. And who was it that you talked to about this? I spoke with um, Officer, or excuse me, Detective Cochran. Okay. Is that Brian Cochran? Yes. Okay. And did you advise him about item number 10, that, they, that he had placed hair for Michelle Hotmockby in a sexual assault kit? Yes. Okay. And you sent it back to him? No, I sent, I sent it to the central lab. For, for trace analysis? Yes. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, item, what's your next item then? Uh, the next item is my item number 11 and the department item number 54, which is blue jeans belonging to David Dooley. Okay, and what test did you perform? On this item, I saw areas of very faint brown staining on the front and the back of the pant legs, and I tested those for blood. Okay, and what was the result? No blood was found on this item. And what did you do with it when you were done? That item was repackaged and it was sent back to the uh, Boone County Sheriff's Department. Okay, and the next item? The next item is my item number 12, department item number 44, a utility knife. And what did you do with that? Uh, this item, I swabbed it for DNA. I found some red-brown staining on the item, and I tested it for blood, and I collected swabs from the blood that I had found, and I also collected a piece of clear sticky plastic that I found inside the blade sleeve. How many swabs did you take? My item 12.1 was swabs from handle of utility knife, and that was four swabs. 
my item 12.2 were swabs from sleeve of utility knife, and that were, was three swabs. Okay. So although we start with one item, that's item 12, because you do swabs and you did two, one swab is 12.1, the other swab is 12.2. Yes. So you're, you're essentially creating additional items here during your process. Is that right? Yes, of items. Okay. So you took those swabs, and did you test them for uh, the presence of blood? I had already tested them for the presence of blood, item 2.1. And the results were? Item 12 contains blood. Presumptive testing for human origin was positive. And what did you do with that? The swabs, item 12.1 and 12.2, were sent to the Central Forensic Lab for DNA analysis. And then the utility knife? The utility knife was sent back to Boone County Sheriff's Department. Okay. And what's your next item? My next item is item number 13, department item number 33, swabs from Tom Seaman's office. Okay. Any testing on that? Yes, I tested it for the presence of blood. And what were the results? No blood was found on this item. And so what would you do with that? That item was sent back to the Boone County Sheriff's Department. And what's next? Next is my item number 14, department item number 34, swabs from Tom Seaman's office. Okay, so this is a different swab than the one you just testified about, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, what testing did you do? I also tested this item for the presence of blood, and it was presumptive positive for blood on this item. What does presumptive mean? What? Presumptive basically means it's likely to be this body fluid. Okay. And what do we do when we have something that's presumptive positive for blood? What do you mean? What are your options? I can't confirm it with blood specifically, so uh, that's as far as my testing goes with that item. And that item specifically was sent for DNA analysis. It was. Okay, so it went on to the Kentucky State Police lab for DNA testing? Yes. Okay. All right, what's next? Next item is my item number 15, department item number 12, swabs from floor near body. And did you do any tests there? Yes, I tested this item for the presence of blood. And the results? This item contains blood. Presumptive testing for human origin was positive. And what did you do with that? That item was forwarded to the central lab for DNA analysis. Okay. And your next item? Next item is item number 16, department item number 31, knife from janitor's closet. And what'd you do? I tested this item for the presence of blood, and no blood was found on this item. I also took swabs from the handle of this item, and the swabs, which created sub-item number 16.1, that was sent back to the Boone County Sheriff's Department. But both things then were sent back, is that right? Yes. And then you have listed item 18 on your report. Yes. That wasn't something for you to test, correct? No, it's not. But what, what, what is item 18? I, my item 18 is CD of photos from scene. Okay. And then uh, I believe your next up is an item 19, and that's uh, agency number 60? Yes. I think I also did item number 17 as well. We can skip over that Did one. I miss 17? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, item number 17. Okay. Item number 17 is department item number 32, which is a screwdriver. And what test did you do? I tested this for the presence of blood, and no blood was found on this item. And what did you do with it? Um, I also took swabs from the handle of this item, and the item itself and my sub-item were sent back to the Boone County Sheriff's Department. Okay. Now we're on item 19, right? Yes. Okay. What's item 19? Um, item 19 is uh, department item number 60, which is a sexual assault evidence collection kit from Michelle Mockby. And just looking at your report, it appears that even though it's item 19, you sort of make subcategories of that item, do you not? Yes. Okay. And just so walk us through what those are. Mm -hmm. Um, 19.1 is a blood standard, 19.2 is a vaginal smear, 
19.3, vaginal swabs, 19.4, buckle standard, 19.5, control swabs, 19.6, anal swabs, 19.7, head hair standard, 19.8, pubic hair standard, 19.9, pubic hair combings, 19.10, right hand fingernails, 19.11, left hand fingernails. Okay, well, let's go down the list there, uh, and please explain what tests you did, uh, what the results were, and what you did with the item when you were done testing. 19.1 is a blood standard. I just opened to verify that it was from Michelle Mockby, and then I resealed that. That is used in DNA analysis for comparison purposes. Uh, so a standard is, it's what law enforcement or, or the lab, we know this to be from this person. Yes. And you can compare against that, correct? Yes. That's a standard, okay. And so this was your standard, you confirmed that it that it was what it was. Yes. Okay. You repackaged it. Yes. Okay. And this item was sent on for DNA analysis. 19.2 is a vaginal smear, and no analysis was done on this item. 19.3 are vaginal swabs. I tested this item for the presence of semen and saliva. And 19.3, excuse me, the vaginal swabs contained semen. And no saliva was found on this item. Why no testing on the smear? The vaginal smear and the vaginal swabs are created from the same set of swabs, so it would be redundant. Okay. Okay, what's next? All right, um, item 19.4 is a buckle standard, which is basically a swabbing from the inside of the cheeks. Um, it, it can also be used as a reference standard, but in this case, I did not have oral swabs, so I tested it for the presence of semen. When I opened this item, I saw red-brown staining, so it was also tested for the presence of blood. And this item contains blood. Presumptive testing for human origin was positive, and no semen was found on this item. Where's the buckle standard taken from? The inside of the cheeks. So if this is from the victim in this case, someone took a swab inside her cheek, and it was presumptive for blood? Yes. Okay, thank you. And what did you, you do with that? This item was repackaged back in the sexual assault kit, and it was sent back to uh, Boone County Sheriff's Department. Okay, what's next? Item 19.5 is a set of control swabs. I did not do any analysis on that item. And again, for the same reason uh, as the blood standard that you testified about earlier? Uh, control swabs are a little different. They are just collected to make sure if down the line contamination occurs, we can see how these swabs were collected by testing against these control swabs that should not have anything on them. Okay. Uh, what's next? Item 19.6, anal swabs. Uh, when I opened this item, I noticed dark brown and black matter stuck to the swab, so I tested it for uh, the presence of blood. This item, no blood was found on this item. I also tested it for the presence of semen. No semen was found on this item. And I also found this item to contain hair. Okay, so what'd you do with it? This item 19.6 was sent back to Boone County Sheriff's Department. Okay, and what's next? Okay. Item 19.7 is the head hair standard. No analysis was done on this item. What's that? Uh, this is a standard used for uh, if hair comparisons are requested, and it would go to Trace for them to do the analysis. Okay. Item 19.8. Did, did it get sent to Trace? I did not send it to Trace. Did you send it back to the Boone County Sheriff's Office? I did. Okay. Okay, what's next? Item 19.8 is pubic hair standard. This item I did not do any analysis on. It was repackaged in the sexual assault kit and sent back to the Boone County Sheriff's Department. And again, because that's a standard, correct? Yes. Okay. And then what's next? Item 19.9 is a pubic hair combings. I did not do any analysis on this item. It was repackaged in the sexual assault kit and sent back to the Boone County Sheriff's Department. Why no analysis on that? Uh, the pubic hair combings is, again, if um, they want hair analysis. And so I did not do any hair analysis. So you package it back up? Yes. Okay. And it, it, I'm sorry, you said it was sent where? Uh, back to the Boone County Sheriff's Department. Okay. And next item? Um, item 19.10 is right hand fingernails. Uh, I did not do any analysis on that item. That item was sent to the Central Forensic Laboratory for DNA analysis. And item 19.11 is left hand fingernails. I did not do any analysis on that item. 
and that was forwarded to the Central Forensic Lab for DNA analysis. Can I ask you why you didn't do any analysis or check for blood on, on those two, the last two, the fingernail clippings from the right and left hand? Yes. Uh, we consider fingernail clippings uh, low-level DNA samples, um, so I... It wouldn't make sense for me to open them and swab them when I know it, they're still going to DNA regardless of anything that I find on that item. Right. And, and sometimes there's there's risk, is there not, of over-testing something because you can only test something so many times until you have used up the entire sub the subject. It's gone. Yes, if it's a limited sample. It's a limited sample. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a, Is that the sum total of your involvement in this? Yes. Okay. Um, you mentioned that there was a second submission to you. Yes. Okay, what was the second submission? The second submission contained the sexual assault evidence collection kit, item 19. Okay, that was item 19? Yes. Okay. And that's uh, agency item 60? Yes. Okay. So, just a couple more questions. Um, how, how do you receive property at your facility, uh, evidence like this? Uh, the detective or their submitting officer will bring it into the lab in person, and we'll go over, they'll um, have a request form that is accompanying the evidence, and we'll go through it item by item to make sure everything matches up. Okay. And is it a secured facility? Yes. How so? Uh, we have a lock and key on the front door. Oh, we have a lock and key on the front door? Yes. But where is this? Uh, where are these items stored? Uh, I, I'm assuming that when it shows up, you don't immediately get to work on it. You probably have other things you have to do, and you work around to it, correct? Yes, I have an uh, evidence locker. You, and you have a locker. Who has the key to that? I do. Anyone else? No. So it stays in the evidence locker till you look at it, do what you need to do, then it either goes back in the locker or it gets sent back out to the requesting agency or to another lab. Yes. Did I get all that right? Yes. Okay. One second. As far as I think, that's uh, that's all I have at this time. I appreciate you uh, coming to Boone County and uh, testifying today. Uh, the defense may have some questions for you, okay? Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Bartman. Hi. I'm Jeff Wallace, and I represent David Dooley. Um, start by asking you, do you recall when you received the first submissions, in this case, from Detective Talk? Yes, I received uh, the items, the first submission, on August the 1st, 2012, at 11 a.m. And your, um, I guess your duties as a serologist is not to make a match to any particular standard, correct? That's correct. And so you're, you're looking at items of evidence that are submitted to you, and you're swabbing them, and then potentially forwarding those on to someone else? Yes. Okay. Um, and then being able to indicate whether or not there's a presence of bodily fluid? Yes. Okay. Um, when you completed, uh, well, let me just ask, did you complete that? When did you complete your report? Um, my report was completed November 16th of 2012. And so your report would go through the things where you found bodily fluids? but not that there was any sort of match to any particular individual, correct? Not on my report, no. Right. And so then you would send some things down to the central lab for additional processing? Yes. And then some things back to the agency? Yes. Okay. I want to talk to you about um, a few of the particular items that you examined. Um, specifically, let's let's start with item number nine. I believe it's on your um, report. Mm -hmm. You have your report to be able to reference that, correct? Yes. Um, item number nine is um, you have a label here as underwear from Michelle Mockby. Is that true? Yes. And so you stated that you took you took a sample, um, a cutting. Um, is, is that was that your testimony? Yes. But did you you did not forward that to the central lab? Did you? Or did no, you? I did not. Okay. Um, because you had what was cataloged later in your report as um, a potential sexual assault examination kit. Yes. Okay. But you did do some additional swabbing of number nine, and I believe that's where you got your item 9.1. Is that true? Yes, it is. And so 9.1 is, to explain that to the jury, 
um, is um, was a swab. They're swabs, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, what exactly were you swabbing on 9.1? Or not, but I believe in your bench fence you stated that you took, that you swabbed all the way around. Is it true? My notes say that I took four swabs from the waistband for touch DNA. Okay, so you, and it, it may have been, uh, you recall that you swabbed the back and the front of the waistband? I would have, I knew I would have. And that's just your normal practice, yes. you would have swabbed the entire thing? Yes. Okay. And so at that point, you didn't send the cutting, but you did send the swab that you prepared? Yes. Okay, on to the central lab. Let's talk to you about item number 12. You have it labeled as, um, in your report, as a utility knife, which is the uh, item from the Boone County Sheriff's Department, number 44. Do you recall actually um, breaking down that knife? Breaking down the knife, taking it apart? Taking it apart. I did not take it apart. Did you, um, I guess, it, was it in a, in a sheathing or something like that? I mean, you, you like, the blade could move forward and backward? Uh, it's similar to, I guess, it would be a box cutter. So it's got a blade that you can push out and retract. Okay. And so you, you looked at the um, you looked at the blade of it and you did see blood on the blade of that knife, correct? Or what you believe to be blood at that time before you perform your testing? Uh, according to my notes, it says areas of red-brown staining on blade and inside blade sleeve. Yes. Okay. And so that's when you swabbed that item? Yes. Um, you actually took several, I think it was four swabs of the of that blade sleeve. I have a set of swabs from the handle of the utility knife and then swabs from blade sleeve of utility knife. Okay, so you, you took multiple swabs? Yes. Correct. Okay, and you forwarded all those on to the central lab? Yes, I did. Um, did you also package another item that came from item 12? Was there something inside the knife? Yes, a piece of clear sticky plastic found on inside blade sleeve near blade edge. Okay, and you also packaged that and sent it down to Frankfurt, I think, in a, in a tin or something. Is that how you packaged it? Uh, the item was collected and folded in a piece of exam paper and packaged in sealed tin with the item. So that was sent back to the agency with the item. And that was sent back to the agency, so not forwarded to the lab, it's sent back to the agency. Yes. I'm going to talk about... You said you took, um, you did some, I think, presumptive testing for blood on a couple of swabs that were found. I believe they're your items 13 and 14. They're labeled swabs from Tom Seaman's office on your report? Yes. Is that true? So you were doing a, the presumptive testing for that, which is the, I guess it's phenol phthalene, is that what you use? Yes. And so you get an indication about whether or not you think there's blood there, but then you have to do a confirmatory test with a hematrace. Um, if there's enough sample there. If but, there's enough sample. Yes. And so in this in this particular, well, let's let's go back to that. So when you look at any sample, you can use your judgment at the outset to determine whether there's not whether there's enough material there to even do um, a phenol thaline test. Is true. I always try to do a phenol thaline test. You always try to do one. Yes. But you could make the determination at the outset that you should do one because of the limited item 14, which showed a presumptive for for. Uh, Blood, is that true? I'm sorry if I skipped the question to 14, but it's okay. Um, item 14, presumptive testing for blood was positive on this item. And then so you after you did the, the, the test for penal thaline, you forwarded that swab. Was it a swab? I guess it came it came to you as a swab. It's two sets of swabs, or a set of two swabs. Okay, and so you forwarded those on to the uh, central laboratory. Yes. and you do the best you can to guard against any kind of contamination. Is that true? Yes. And so that would involve, I suppose, changing gloves a lot? Yes. Um, so lots of sets of gloves. Mm -hmm. um, you have 
And so it's for each item you, you replace it, you have a new set of parts for paper for each item to be handled. Yes. You want to minimize cross contamination between items? Yes. Or, or exclude it altogether? Correct? Altogether. Um, and then any potential contamination that could come from yourself. So, if, for instance, if you talked over an item, you could potentially contaminate it. That's possible, yeah. Um, and so you try to minimize any sort of interaction that you could have with that with that item. Yes. Um, you also wear protective equipment, I guess, sometimes to prevent that from happening. Yes, lab coats and gloves. Okay. So for the items you tested, of course, you can't test anything you didn't receive. Would you agree with me on that? Yes. So if it's not submitted by an agency or by the sheriff's department, then you, you can't test it? That's correct. Um, you can look at particular items and use your judgment as to whether or not you think something would be probative or would be relevant for the jury to hear about. Sure. Yes. Um, so for instance, as an example, if you have sometimes, um, if there were, a, there were a stabbing or something like that, and you have blood on a blade of a knife, that might not be as probative as essentially the Maybe the touch DNA on the handle. Both of those would be probative for that case. Both of them are probative for that particular case, but I guess depending on the facts. And you review the facts in your case as well. So you had CD, a CD here, a photograph CD. Yes. Okay. And so then you can kind of make determinations about things that may be probative and things that may not be. Yes. Just a small question. Sure. Okay. Any questions? No questions, no comments, Robert. Okay. Now, I know she has scheduling conflicts, so I'm assuming that she's been. Your Honor, may we approach you? Connect. During the trial of any case, we're going to be uh, closer to the death, so it'll be back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. During the trial of any case, you should do not to form or express an opinion if the case is submitted to you, not to converse with or allow yourselves to be addressed by any other person on any subject of the trial. Whether an officer, party, witness, or attorney should talk to you without permission of the court. I instruct the court to get in law for to contact you. Uh, as I described previously to the bailiff and myself. And also, if you do not uh, research, read, listen to, or view any news media accounts of the trial, this includes utilizing your own smartphones or computers during the trial or at home to research the trial or any witness. And do not visit a place which is a material fact occurred without authorization from the court. Take your button off, please. Yeah, leave your buttons and your notepads. All right, please. My hand will be back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. So we're excused till then. All right, thank you. And I'll just order you don't discuss your testimony with anyone. That's in case with anyone. Please, my approach. We've got the disc. Anything we need to address before we break for this evening? Well, no. All right, so I was tempted to ask. Never mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on sleep deprivation for a whole week as well. So I asked the court for delayed start, but the jury's gone. Well, so why don't we, um, we'll be around 8.30 if there's no issues, but I think maybe one thing, just make sure we keep the exhibits aligned, maybe get those a little bit reorganized. We're, we're going to reorganize them. We'll take care of the stickers. And we'll you know, as we, like I said, I think this is usually kind of open when we start a new witness, so then we can, or who, if you're going to use the same, that's fine, and then that way you can, if we put it back, at least keep it on here, and then when we're finished. Yeah, I'll help put it back in order since that was the primary reason. Anything else? We'll see you in the morning.